to another episode. <laughs> We're a bit behind, aren't we? Lots of things have gone on. She she had a call a couple of days ago. So, of course, that means Beverly's had it. I've got, I've got it now. So uh, we were planning to go out today, but it's been fairly blowy. We've both got fairly thick heads and thicker than usual. Ma thicker yeah. than usual. Yeah, the wine doesn't help. <laughs> but I do love the stuff. <laughs> Especially as I've got to have some paracetamol pretty quick, so you know, otherwise I'm going to be flaking out. But there you yeah, go. Absolutely. So one of the other little things that we've been doing is updating our technology. And we've treated ourselves to some new phones. Now, these these are not particularly expensive phones. I mean, they're not cheap, don't get me wrong. But a uh, headline iPhone or Galaxy, as I'm sure many of you know, is like a thousand, twelve hundred pounds. <laughs> so so we, we've treated ourselves to these Galaxy A25s. Now, we did a lot of reading, we did a lot of checking on the reviews and things, didn't we? And um, we've still got to find out if the proof is in the pudding, so... That's true. But basically what the review came back and said was something along the lines of, yeah, they're, they're sort of all right, you know, middle-of-the-road phones. Um, not great for gaming, though. Yeah, not. but if you're, if you're one of the reasons we give them such a low rating is because when you're gaming on them, they're, they're, they're pretty naff, and we thought... Am I going to game? <laughs> I don't think so. And... You know, yeah, they've got good, good, good marks for video, and they do sound recording, and hopefully they do all the bits and bobs and bobs. They've got a load of the software on them, so we can make more episodes. But I mean, they were like two hundred pounds, not twelve hundred. So I was then thinking to myself, our expectations of what we want from technology are in some ways very, very different from the people who reviewed this. I mean. Poor gaming response. The, the screen has only been taken up to 120 hertz refresh rate and things like that when it used to be like 60. And I think, sounds good to me. And they're going, but when you're playing Call of Duty, it looks a bit jerky. And I'm thinking, eh? <laughs> so I'm on solitaire, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. So that brought to mind maybe because we live on a boat, maybe our expectations of a lot of things are very different. Oh, gosh, yes. And, you know, the difference between living on a boat and living on land. And if you come to living on a boat with an unreasonable expectation, I don't think you're going to have a good time. One of the major differences between living on a boat and living on land is the wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my daughter has a bigger wardrobe for her coats than my wardrobe on the boat. Her wardrobe in the boat and the spare wardrobe in the back combined. That's just her coats. We haven't got the knicker drawer yet, or 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 the tops, or the trousers, or or, or the fancy dresses, or the shoes. Oh Jesus God, no, the shoes. Oh my God. So oh, don't talk to me about the shoes. <laughs> and also, even if we did have all those wardrobes, you don't really get the chance. I mean, we tried a couple of episodes flouncing about in in our, in our glad rags, and it didn't end well, did it? We have we have got glad drags, but getting in and on on and off the boat, we have to be stern too, really, for doing on and off the boat in glad drags. We do. So getting thought, over the rail is just hard. So we thought, for those of you thinking of spending a prolonged time, maybe not living aboard, but spending a prolonged time over the summer, <laughs> Sorry. that is 2024, <sighs> we would just or do... in the future. We would just do, yeah, but next year's summer might be nice. Last, year, last year's was rubbish. This one is not exactly spectacular. But next year might be nice. Who knows? But if you're trying to go out later in this summer, here's a few things to think about. I mean, the difference between being on a boat and being on land. Well, uh, this week um, I met one of our subscribers and um, she asked me a question. She asked me, um, you know, what's it really like living on a boat? Um, because Beverly and I have been living on a boat now for five years, maybe even more. But, um, you know, and she wanted to know what it's like living on a boat versus, say, living in a house, which I lived in for a few more years than the five. Let's trust me on this. But um, my best answer was, it's the same, but different. So I just thought that we would take the opportunity to explain that answer in a little bit more detail. Like, um, you know, I'm in, the, I'm in my boat and I'm doing, oh my gosh, shock horror, I'm doing the washing up. You know, what's the difference between being on a boat in a caravan 
or even out camping in the field you've still got to get the washing up done so um you know it's exactly the same you have your taps and oh there you go some water's come out of it you know that's exactly the same as you have in the house one of the problems with water on the boat is getting it out of the tap is one thing but you've got to get it out of this tap before you get it out of that tap and as you can see from the camera you're quite some distance away so that means you need this devil so Salty Lass has got 250 litre tanks Gainer's standing on top of one at the minute and there's one at the back of the boat so that's 300 litres of water and that 300 litres we can generally get by on using about 30 litres a day which sounds like a lot but that gives you 10 days and after that you've got to fill it up again not something you have to worry about at in, in a house, at home, in a flat, on, on land because water just keeps coming out of the tap forever it's wonderful we don't get that so one of the places that um, living on a boat is different is um, these are melanin nice and durable and of course don't break as easy I then have oh wonderful placky glasses not as nice as glass but if you're going to have glass on a boat the word destroy comes to mind so these are our glassware oh wonderful wonderful plastic now you can choose to have glass on a boat but obviously expect breakages which is why we have got a mismatch of mugs because i still like my pot mug i don't like drinking my tea out of um plastic oh and my coffee is a definite no-no but we have a collection of mugs you know we don't have all wonderful same set we've got a mix match but you know that's what you have to expect so it's just one of those differences plastic melanin and yeah the occasional pot one of the things people focus on the boat is electric what they really should focus on is energy it's the same thing energy is a form of electric and electric is a form of energy one of the things that we do is we cook using gas and our Mr D thermal cooker which is like cooking in a thermos and you have to cook this for 10 or 15 minutes and it will cook for several hours so I don't need to keep the gas going for several hours now people have said well you know you're on a boat in a house I've got electric in the socket which just electric comes out forever we don't have that we have a very limited electric supply it either comes off the panels and the problem is that if we use things like induction hobs and things like that it drains the batteries well the option is that you can coat the boat in panels and you can get big um, lithium banks and the rest of it but we still know people who've been delivering boats like that and they've still run out of energy because they boil kettles cook things on induction hobs and they need to run generators just to keep the boat going which just seems slightly bonkers but so this gives us one option um, what we do is we cut down on energy use notice I say energy not just electric because gas is energy by the time we kitted this boat out with lithium for the sorts of costs we could have several years worth of gas bottles even at the stupid price we pay here um, so by cutting down the amount of gas we cut down the amount of energy we cut down the bills now in a house you, everybody worries about energy bills in a house but it's a bit more awkward on a boat because your options are so more so much, your options are so much more limited on a boat an example of a limit we have in the boat you don't have in the house is this this is of course where we get our electric from and it has a limitation all of its own that limitation is 16 amps just a bit more than you take to boil a kettle but this powers the boat we can't use more than 16 amps now when I go to my mum's place and she asks me to make her a cup of tea and a bit of toast it still freaks me out a bit that I can run a toaster and a kettle at the same time as having the cooker on I mean it must be about 50 60 amps and my, my, my mind sort of goes because I've got used to conserving the energy I'm not just not used to having that much energy available on the boat we've cut back on as much electric use as we can by having as many manual items as we can it's just another way in which the two differ so when you are cleaning uh, your boat you can't use bleach um, we do actually have a 1% solution bleach on board uh, and even when we're using that we only use it very sparingly just sort of like a quick clean with a quick zip and uh, we wipe it off with a cloth just so that you you know you're looking after the environment the environment 
you live in the environment so you have to care for it so you know you, you've got to think about what products you're using and uh, full strength bleach is a definite no-no another problem of course is the hollywood shower if you want a hollywood shower then you've got to use the marina facilities and this is where you come for your hollywood shower but the one thing that i really really do like about Vanga is it has a bath <laughs> the bath so one of the major differences between living on a boat and uh, in a house is in a house you'll have facilities like um, your washing machine and your laundry facilities this place even has an iron um, in your house but you, it realistically when you're living on a boat you come in to service yourself with things like laundry. Also, it costs money. You know, um, I normally put all the machine on um, for a wash and then three dries. So it's three pounds just in drying. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, week's video, but do you know what I forgot was one of the biggest differences between living on a boat and uh, living in a house. Of course, a boat can move.